In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome to you all to our Mass from St. Simon's today, the Friday of the 27th week in ordinary time. And I guess as we move towards that, that date of October the 19th, where there's been a bit of hope that things might be eased, some days it seems a bit closer and sometimes it seems a bit further away. But we pray that hopefully it will be achieved for the many, many people hanging out for businesses and any number of other different areas. But also that, well, if it's not achieved, somehow or other we can continue to manage as best we can. Let's just pause for a moment now at the beginning of our Mass in which we ask God's help and strength and guidance and we ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you call your people to turn away from sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and you write your truth in our inmost heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgive sins through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you show your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow your grace upon us, and make we who hasten to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Don't you see that it is those who rely on faith who are the sons of Abraham? Scripture foresaw that God was going to use faith to justify the pagans and proclaimed the good news long ago when Abraham was told. In you, all the pagans will be blessed. Those, therefore, who rely on faith receive the same blessings as Abraham, the man of faith. On the other hand, those who rely on the keeping of the law are under a curse, since scripture says, cursed be everyone who does not persevere in observing everything prescribed in the book of the law. The law will not justify anyone in the sight of God, because we are told the righteous man finds life through faith. The law is not even based on faith, since we are told the man who practices these precepts finds life through practicing them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by being cursed for our sake. Since scripture says, cursed be everyone who is hanged on a tree. This was done so that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might include the pagans. And so, that through faith we might receive the promised spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will thank the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and their assembly. Great are the works of the Lord, to be pondered by all who love them. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. Majestic and glorious his work, his justice stands firm forever. He makes us remember his wonders. 
The Lord is compassion and love. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He gives food to those who fear him, keeps his covenant ever in mind. He has shown his might to his people by giving them the lands of the nation. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The prince of this world will now be cast out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had cast out a devil, some of the people said, It is through Beelzebul, the prince of devils, that he casts out devils. Others asked Jesus as a test for a sign from heaven. But knowing what they were thinking, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is heading for ruin, and a household divided against itself collapses. So too with Satan. If he is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? Since you assert that it is through Beelzebul that I cast out devils. Now if it is through Beelzebul that I cast out devils, through whom do your own experts cast them out? Let them be your judges then. But if it is through the finger of God that I cast out devils, then know that the kingdom of God has overtaken you. So long as a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are undisturbed. But when someone stronger than he is attacks and defeats him, the stronger man takes away all the weapons he relied on and shares out his spoil. He who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it wanders through waterless country looking for a place to rest. And not finding one, it says, I will go back to the home I came from. But on arrival, finding it swept and tidied, it then goes off and brings seven other spirits, more wicked than itself. They go in and set up house there so that the man ends up being worse than he was before. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus gives a phrase that's often used in a lot of areas of normal conversation and discussion. Every kingdom divided against itself is heading for ruin. A household divided against itself collapses. We, as human beings, we're pretty good at arguing. We can have different perspectives on something, and sometimes that can be enriching, and sometimes it can be enormously divisive. And ultimately, in those situations, more often than not, everybody loses. Everybody falls apart. We see it in businesses where you have maybe two people start a business and further down the track one wants to expand and the other says no we shouldn't. We see it in families in different circumstances where people want to do this and others want to do that and eventually if both hold their ground well people end up going separate ways. On any number of different levels, we can have points of division. The question that we need to ask ourselves in so many situations like this is, does it matter? And maybe, does it really matter? And maybe a third question is, is it about me? And they're the three questions that maybe when we find ourselves on the brink of some area of dissension and disagreement, they're good questions to ask. Does it matter? Does it really matter? And is it about me? And who knows what the answer will be, but somehow, and that's why we come together and we pray 
like we're doing now in the Mass. We come across those situations, we maybe ask ourselves those questions, knowing that division, taking a stand, can be important on principle. And if we let go of that principle, a lot of other things fall apart as well. But sometimes taking a stand is just about asserting our own authority, our own ego, our own self-centeredness, and it doesn't matter, or it doesn't really matter, and we can let it go. In quickening terms, you let it go through to the keeper. Knowing the difference between the two, it's a bit like the serenity prayer of changing the things you can and letting go of the things you can let go and knowing the difference between the two and so on. There's lots of different ways in which this is expressed. But in the way in which we operate with one another and we live our lives, we can get into arguments and dissension and difficulty where things really don't matter, where the people themselves or maybe the positive things that they also offer have got to be taken into account and we can live with this and live with that and maybe we eventually have to take a stand on something else but sometimes we get through it nonetheless. Because Jesus says, if you're divided against yourself in your own organisation or social group or family or whatever it might happen to be, well, those divisions, unless they're healed, unless there's efforts to build the bridges, well, it's all going to go down a very difficult path indeed. They're wise words, but the challenge, of course, is to know when we take a stand and when we let something go through. That's why we're here to make that prayer and ask the Lord's guidance, wisdom in making those sort of decisions and seeing the way clear as to what we let go and what we, dare I say, use a quickening term, hit for six. Let's stand for our prayers of intercession. We have been baptised into your death. May we be cleansed of greed and envy and clothed in the strength and gentleness of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We have been sealed with the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Confirm us in your service and help us to bear witness to you in the society in which we live. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Before you suffered, you longed to eat the Passover with your disciples. As we take part in your Eucharist, may we also share in your resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you continue to work in your faithful people. Create through us a new world where injustice and destruction can give way to growth, freedom and hope. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you to receive us, please, at the sacrifice we offer you. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Lord, accept the prayers of your faithful with these sacrificial offerings. Through these acts of devotion, may we be brought to the glory of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. As best we can, we now offer each other a sign of peace and friendship in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. idea of a spiritual communion prayer for those who for any number of reasons are unable to receive the Eucharist in the usual, normal fashion, has been something that the church has had for many centuries. And I received an email just the other day which indicated to me that the one that we're using has been around for quite some years. It goes back apparently to St. Alphonsus Liguri who was the founder of the religious order called the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, which is known to most people as the Redemptorists. They were the ones who had the fiery missions in parishes for many years. But wonderful group of people, and maybe not quite so fiery as they used to be these days, in terms of their presentation at Mass. But this little prayer that we use in our Mass, and is in fact being used by people all over the world these days, goes back to, I think, about the 16th, 17th century, St. Alphonsus Liguri. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we humbly entreat your majesty so that just as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.